Hey everyone, today we're going to cover 10 facts about a Jedi Master that you might not know too much about. Now I did a video covering his untimely death, so if you want you can check that out and I'll link it in the description. But today's video is going to be a top 10 about this Q-tip looking awesome funky Jedi. Here we go. Number 1. He was brainy. The lean, long-necked Jedi Master, Yerael Poof, was a Kermian native to the outer world of, well, Kermia. Like all members of his species, he had four arms. His upper arms, and an additional set that hit under his cloak. Because of his extra limbs, Yerael was very dexterous, and his olfactory glands, that gave him his sense of smell, were located in his hands. In addition to all that, the Kermian also had two brains, one that was located inside of his head, as expected, and another within his chest. With his long neck, long body, and legs, he easily stood at least three feet taller than most other humanoid races. Number 2. Yerael preferred not to use a lightsaber. A diplomat and teacher, the Kermian Jedi Master was a highly admired member of the Jedi High Council, and a bit of a rascal in his use of the Force. Irail was extremely adept at mind tricks and force illusions, to the point that he preferred to use that ability over the use of his lightsaber. Though, like all Jedi, he knew how to use the elegant weapon if he had to. In fact, his dexterity made him a frighteningly dangerous lightsaber combatant, as he was able to perfect many moves that only someone with his spineless anatomy was able to do. Number 3. He practiced the art of battle meditation. Now that you've watched the video from a few days ago, you'll understand this much better. Battle meditation is a force power that augments a force practitioner's allies' morale, while simultaneously corroding away at their enemies' will to fight. This was one of Yerael's unique talents. He preferred it as an alternative to resorting to violence. Though the Kermian had his own take on the ability, one thing that he changed about it was that he would boost his friend's spirits, while for his adversaries, he would generate illusions of terrible beasts or cohorts of soldiers to instill fear and terror in their hearts, which I guess is a better option than a lightsaber through the chest. Number 4. His connection to the video game Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Jedi Master Cordova and his apprentice Sir Junda came before the High Council, while Yerael was present. The two Jedi had just returned from a mission to the forested planet Namil, where they had to restore peace between a tribe of Trandoshans and Dupai monks. Junda had mistakenly believed that it had been the Trandoshans who were the aggressors, but her master had discovered that they had just retaliated because the Dupai monks had stolen credits from their tribe. The Council was briefing the duo on their next mission, to help explore a temple that the Da Corporation had recently uncovered on the planet Totho. When Cordova inquired whether it was a Jedi temple or not, Yurail explained that the Council did not believe that the temple was Jedi in origin. They were being sent to replace a division of Republic troops, who were being redirected to the Bunka system to help evacuate the populace, as that's the system star that began to collapse. Number 5. He was erased from existence. Yurail was supposed to appear in Attack of the Clones, but George Lucas thought that viewers might get him confused with the Kaminoans, as the cloners also had long necks. However, as there was no new footage of the Jedi High Council chamber shot from Episode 2, Lucas's people found archived footage from The Phantom Menace instead and reused it for the sequel film. They digitally removed Yurail from the film and added Verk Jedi Coleman Trebor in his place. May he rest in peace. Number 6. Yurail enjoyed passing on his knowledge to the next generation. At the Academy on Coruscant, as an instructor, Yurail taught his students many things, including his joy for illusions and the Jedi mind trick. Though he was a champion of the abilities, he did realize that using the power could lead to serious consequences on those it was utilized on. So he cautioned his students about its danger and how they needed to be careful to not leave any permanent damage. His lectures were so popular that one of them was stored in a holocron created by Jedi Master Asli Crimson several thousand years prior. The device was stored in the Jedi Temple, where at times additional lessons by other masters, including Dooku, were recorded on it. After the fall of the Republic, the holocron ended up in the Sith Lord. Darth Vader, where he put it in his vault in his castle's personal quarters. Number 7. 
he conjured up a rancor. Master Poof, while on a mission with literally trillions of lives on the line, when he witnessed a young boy being bullied by a gang of hoodlums, decided to put the priority of his mission aside and focused on his compassion which would not allow him to leave the situation alone. So he took a moment to create an illusion of a ferocious rancor to scare the gang away. After the boy was safe, he continued on with his mission, which would see him teaming up with Django Fett. But I'm gonna get to that later. Number eight, he had an Ithorian Padawan. During his lectures, Yerael took notice of a particularly skilled Jedi initiate named Roron Korob. He was so impressed by the young Ithorian that he took him as his apprentice. After years of one-on-one -on -one studying with the Kyrmian Jedi Master, Korob passed the Jedi trials to knighthood and was a master by the time the Clone Wars broke out. Because of Master Poof's teachings, the Ithorian Jedi developed powerful mental skills and became one of the most well-regarded Jedi of his species. Number 9. He fought against a species that was immune to mind tricks. A series of aggressive actions by the Yinchori, a turtle-like green-skinned reptilian species with an inherent immunity to telepathic uses of the Force, including mind tricks, led to a crisis called the Yinchori Uprising. The hostile species had developed a military force with dreams of galactic conquest, in part due to the manipulations of Plagueis and his apprentice, Darth Sidious. Several of Yurail's fellow Jedi counselors went to deal with the conflict, but he remained behind, along with Master Yoda, as they watched their comrades leave from the temple's landing pad on its rooftop. But the pan-galactic crisis soon came to Coruscant, and within a few days since the other masters left, the temple was attacked by Yinchori warriors, who had managed to storm the High Council's tower's entrance Atrium. Yurail and the other Jedi who had remained behind in the temple gathered together and fought off the invaders. Because of their innate immunity to his favorite powers, Yurail couldn't use his mind tricks. So, instead, he had to rely on his incredible lightsaber skills. And yeah, even while he didn't want to use one, per se, he was really good at it. Now, all but one of the Yinchori perished. The conflict soon came to an end. Number 10. What you've all waited for. Yurail and Jango Fett teamed up to save Coruscant. Master Mace Windu informed the gathered Jedi High Council that he had learned of a threat that had emerged that required an immediate response from the Jedi. A general named Ashar Korda was a part of another reptilian species called the Anodat Prime. They were intending to destroy either Alderaan, Corellia, or Coruscant with an ancient artifact called the Infant of Shah. The object was from the planet Salot and was capable of destroying an entire planet. The High Council sent two of their own to Alderaan and Corellia, while Mace Windu volunteered to protect Coruscant. However, Yarael suggested that perhaps it should be him that safeguarded the capital planet, instead of Mace, because the Kermian Jedi Master was better attuned to pinpointing the disturbances in the Force, such that the artifact was emitting which the Council agreed on. The Force guided Yurail to Coruscant's central power generator. This was where he found Ashar Korda with the artifact in hand, ready to use it. Yurail demanded that the General and his allies hand over the destructive object. Just then, Jango Fett and another bounty hunter named Zam Wessel entered the chamber and insisted the infant Shah was turned over to them. Recognizing their odds would be better working together, the Jedi Master and the two bounty hunters formed an uneasy alliance. Together, they quickly dispatched of the Anodat Prime General and his followers. Yurail then took possession of the statue and began to study it. While he was distracted, a wounded General Korda quickly leapt at the Jedi and fatally stabbed Yurail with his vibroblade through the Kermian's heart, the one organ he didn't seem to have two of. Django and Zam blasted Korda apart. They had killed the General, but had not been able to get to him before Yurail's mortal wound. The Jedi Master, dying, withdrew the blade and collapsed. He pleaded with Sam to give him the artifact. With the last of his strength, Irail used his force powers to fuse the object's energies back to a neutral state, rending it inert. And with that, he was depleted and passed away after having saved trillions of lives that resided on Coruscant. Hope you all enjoyed this top 10 facts about Master Irail Poof. He was a very interesting Jedi. And I hope that we'll get some more comics or books or, hey, maybe we'll even see him in some backstory movie or show or something. That'd be awesome to see. Let me know what your favorite fact from this was or maybe one that I didn't mention. And I will see you all in the next episode of Star Wars Theory. If you're new here, please subscribe 
and like the video if you enjoyed it. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.